said it's gone downhill. <laughs> All right, once again, I want to thank everybody for making the effort to be here this afternoon. It's certainly a great day for the Tribe Women's Basketball Program, but even more so for the William and Mary Athletics Department. Uh, before we get started with the uh, uh, guest of honor, I'd just like to ask that uh, during the event, we're going to have two speakers. After the coach speaks, we'll allow the media to ask some questions. When you do interact with the coach, we'll hand you a mic to speak. If I could just ask you to identify yourself and, and who you're working with, just so uh, you're introduced, and uh, that'll be that. And anybody who needs any one-on-ones afterwards, I'm already aware of one, will break out and go off to the open area. So with that, I want to bring up our Director of Athletics, Brian Mann. Thank you, Pete. Uh, I appreciate it, and certainly debt of gratitude to you and your team for everything that you've done today. I won't try to mention them all today, but how about a round of applause for everything that went into setting up today? This is an incredibly exciting day, and I can't tell you how happy I am to see so many of you here. I think when we went through this process, I talked at great length about the community surrounding William and Mary and what that means, and you all have shown up in a way today that that made me a, a, a truth teller throughout the process. So thank you for everything that you're doing to welcoming our new coach, her family, and to showing how our community cares about William & Mary women's basketball. I wanna just take a few minutes to say a couple quick thank yous. I promise I'll get through them quickly because I know we have a lot to cover today. I'd like to start with my wife, Hillary, who's here today. I don't often get enough chances to thank her publicly for all she does for our family. Thank you, Hillary, for being a rock over the last few weeks. If she's glowing a little more than normal, you may have noticed she's pregnant with our second, and yes. <laughs> and today is an exciting day as our son Russell is celebrating his first birthday today. So, Coach, I can promise you I will always remember the date of your welcome event here at William & Mary. I want to thank our president, Catherine Rowe, who's here today for her support throughout this process. Uh, she played a critical role in us landing this superstar that we're bringing to Williamsburg. Your support of our department and your belief in what our student athletes bring to campus is crystal clear, and I'm grateful for all that you do. Thank you. A few other folks on the search committee. I see Peel Hawthorne, I see Jason Sims, and I know Chelsea Burke is here as well. I've seen more of you three over the last three weeks than I care to admit. But thank you for all the nights and weekends and calls and text messages to get us to this point. I'm grateful for everything that you did. I also want to thank Kyle Bowlesby and the external search firm that he runs that helped us throughout this process. He worked tirelessly and even interrupted a family vacation to help us get to this point, and I'm grateful for all that he did. Perhaps most importantly, as a result of this process, I want to thank the student athletes. When we met three weeks ago, I asked you for two things. I asked you to rally around each other to protect the program, to make sure that we were moving forward. You did that with incredible grace and strength, and I'm, I'm incredibly appreciative for all that you did to get us to this point. I also asked you for your help. I told you that I thought I knew what we needed, but you knew the program better than anybody else, and I needed your insight, your feedback, and your suggestions. I was overwhelmed with your feedback and the way that you came to me in an incredibly thoughtful way to help us find the next leader. We only did that because of you. So thank you, every one of you, for what you did to get us here. I also know that throughout this process, and as often the case in college athletics, there was an army of people behind the scenes helping them along the way. 
certainly our basketball staff who's here today and everyone else throughout the department that wrapped their arms around our student athletes to make sure that we continue to move forward. Thank you to everyone who played a part over the last several weeks. Three weeks ago, we launched a national search. You never really know what's gonna happen when you do that, but I can tell you that I was overwhelmed and blown away by the interest, by the quality of the candidates, by their understanding of William and Mary and what we represent and what we can be. We had sitting head coaches, we had assistant, we had associate head coaches at the Power Five level all the way down to Division Three, those who knew William and Mary well, those who knew us from afar. But the interest was tremendous and it shaped this moving forward from day one. It allowed for some really fun conversations. I learned what people perceive William and Mary to be from the outside when they don't know us. You should feel great about that reputation. It's strong and it's secure. One thing we heard a lot was the overwhelmingly positive response to the commitment that William and Mary is making to our student athletes, to their growth and development, and in particular to basketball. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Katie and Todd Boley, Jen and Scott Mackesy, and so many of you that have generously given to ensure that the Kaplan Arena renovation expansion project will be a reality. And even though we break ground in a few weeks, you should all know that it's paying dividends and it helped us secure a rising star in the women's basketball world. Every step of that process that we went through, one particular candidate continued to rise to the top. Her energy, her attitude, her passion is infectious. If you haven't spoken to her yet, get ready. She has the basketball IQ needed to lift our program to the next level. She has the emotional intelligence to create meaningful relationships with coaches, staff, student athlete, and community members. And right below the surface, I believe there's a grit and a toughness and a competitiveness that is gonna ensure our program, which is in a terrific spot right now, reaches new heights. Most important to me, her sense of purpose and her sense of commitment to the student athlete experience is never far from the center of her radar. Talk to her for more than a minute and you'll understand what I mean. Her resume is tremendous. It started with her decision as a teenager to prioritize her education along a desire to compete at the top of Division I when she attended Northwestern University. Among other stops along the way, she's been at Towson University, so she knows the CAA well and she knows what it's gonna to take to get us to the top. In her last two stops at Georgetown and at Wake Forest show her unwavering belief in the idea that academics and athletics can and should thrive hand in hand. She talked at length about developing every student athlete on the roster from top to bottom and left to right. She talked about developing those meaningful relationships with every student athlete, coach, staff, and community member. We're lucky today she's joined by her husband, Thomas, her daughter, Lila, and just the tip of the iceberg of a family that as I understand is gonna help us secure a home court advantage in Kaplan Arena moving forward. But finally, and I've gotten to know her over these last few weeks, I can tell you she's ready for this moment. It's my great pleasure to introduce the sixth Division I head coach in William & Mary women's basketball history, Erin Dickerson Davis. Thank you all for being here today. I didn't know what to expect, but I should have known better. I've seen all of the support so far, so here we are. I wanted to come to William & Mary because of its amazing academic reputation and the competitive basketball conference, the CAA. I believe in the amazing things that can be achieved here, especially with the support and commitment to the athletic department and the institution. I will recruit student athletes that compete in the classroom as much as they compete on the basketball court. We will recruit young women who are committed to developing themselves holistically as a person, as a student, and as an athlete. We will recruit winners who are dedicated to the process. And we will recruit fighters who, want, who won't crumble under adversity but who instead will rally with their family during hard times. As for me, I consider myself a player's coach that will bring energy, passion, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. I'm a coach that will bring 100% of myself 
every single day for my colleagues, my staff, and for our players. I will build relationships with donors, alumni, and our entire community to make sure everyone feels like they're a part of our program and what we do. I will create a culture that our players will be proud to be a part of, a culture dedicated to getting 1% better every day. I have to now thank a lot of people, so bear with me. I'll try to make it interesting. <laughs> President Catherine Rowe, I knew from the moment I met you that William & Mary was a place I wanted to call home. You spoke with such passion and enthusiasm for this university, and I knew right away that this was for me. I embrace your vision of authentic excellence and can't wait to use that as a foundation to our program. To Brian Mann and the entire committee, you guys were awesome, thank you. I am so grateful for your belief in me to be the next head women's basketball coach at William & Mary. The vision of the athletic department is crystal clear and completely aligns with my passion to create an exceptional student athlete experience both on and off the court and to win games while doing it. I've had the opportunity to work with and play for people that have taught me very valuable lessons and those lessons have shaped who I am today. Jen Hoover taught me that if you believe in people and empower them, there's no limit to what they can achieve. James Howard taught me to never stop learning and never be content. Nikki Reed Geckler taught me how to be a mom and a coach. And that while there's no true work-life balance, by integrating the two, you're reminded that what we do isn't so much a job, but a lifestyle. Barb Smith taught me about the importance of building relationships, discipline, and incredible attention to detail. Jeff Williams taught me how to walk in a room and own it. He forced me to brand myself before that was really a thing. Social media wasn't that big at that point in time. And he taught me to never waver from who I am. Sam Dixon gave me my first job as an assistant coach at 22 years old. I don't know what he was thinking, but I'm grateful. He taught me that it's our job to help these young women navigate their lives and their careers after they leave us. We must nudge them toward their dreams. Tempe and Melissa Brown taught me to be a fierce fighter, that I can make it through hard times, and that if you do this right, these young women will forever hold you a part of their family. And Corey Irvin taught me my first lesson in building a great culture, that if you treat your team like it's a family, it inevitably will become one. To my family, every move I've made from playing at Northwestern to now was in an effort to stay close to you. You are my backbone and I work every day to make you proud. Mom, you are my superhero in its truest form. Dad, you never let me stray away from the relentless pursuit of my dreams. Baby brother, you believed in me more than I believed in myself. Jade, you're my biggest cheerleader. Thank you for putting the battery in my back. To my husband, Thomas, I don't know why you love me so much, but I thank God every day for you. And to Lila, I love you, baby. I do everything for you. Lastly, I'd like to thank my mentors, my friends, people that put up with me every single day, my former student athletes, my new players, my family. Thank you guys for accepting me and thank you for fueling my passion and helping me grow. I'm Erin Dickerson Davis. Everybody calls me Coach E. I'm your next head women's basketball coach at William & Mary and I cannot wait to do something special here and I can't wait to get started. Thank you. Okay, I know that there are some questions from the media, so if I, if I don't know, I'm sorry ahead of time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, Marty with the Daily Press. I'm a wanted to ask, uh, you know, how familiar have you been able to get with the returning players? 
And, uh, you know, having done that and gotten a little familiar with the program, what are your uh, recruiting goals for this coming season? And uh, how much does the portal uh, play into that? Yes, thanks for asking. Um, I had a chance to meet the team yesterday, and we have an exceptional group of young women here. And I think that they've only scratched the surface of what they can do. So I can't wait to get in the gym with them and really start this process of developing them. Um, as far as recruiting goes, we do have one scholarship available right now. Um, and we will look into the portal to see if there's someone that will best suit what we're trying to build here. I know that we have a pretty big class to fill in the 2023 class. And so we will work tirelessly to make sure that, that we're making this university proud with the student athletes we bring in. And uh, what did you say to Brian and the committee uh, to convince them that uh, you were such a good fit at uh, William and Mary as it sounds like Brian feels you are? Yeah. I actually asked him if, if they were sure about me. I'm like, are you sure? Like. Because, woo. <laughs> no, I just explained to him my passion for the student athlete experience. I, I am very passionate about that, being a student athlete and going through a coaching transition, um, being a part of cultures that were great, cultures that needed work. I think I just kept explaining to him that the priority is our student athletes. And if you do right by them, you're going to win some basketball games. Coach Brendan Doyle, Nova Nation. Uh, welcome to Williamsburg. Thank you. Um, obviously, a couple of your prior stops, uh, most recently Wake, and you went to Northwestern and been high academic. What does that kind of uh, uniquely qualify you to uh, coach here at William Mary? Yeah, it just it just made me not afraid to to be here and to recruit those student athletes. I know that you can recruit student athletes that are committed to their academics and their basketball career. So when people talk about the reputation of the school and how hard it is, I've seen it done. So it, it doesn't scare me one bit. Everything comes with its challenges, whether it was here or anywhere else. Um, but I feel like those stops really prepared me to be able to recruit the student athlete that should be at William & Mary. Hi, Dave Johnson. Um, you coached in the CAA for a while, and uh, I was just curious what your thoughts are on the conference. It's an incredible basketball conference. Literally, when you look from top to bottom, there's going to be no nights off in our gym or on the road. Um, it is competitive because of the nature of the coaches that are coaching in this league. You have some veteran coaches. You have some um, hungry first-time head coaches that are trying to make their mark. And I think that it's just going to make for an incredible competitive conference. Coach, uh, Brian Mann mentioned the Kaplan renovation and investment, especially in the women's program here. Um, what does that kind of mean to you, and, and how did that affect you, know, you taking this job? It was one of the most important things, you know, in women's sports, I think we've learned, especially during COVID, that there was a huge discrepancy between the support for men's and women's sports. And when I first spoke with Brian and the committee, one of the first things they told me was about their commitment to the student athlete experience and for women's basketball. And so that did, it was a huge thing in my decision process to want to be here, knowing that that part of it is covered in their experience. So the commitment was incredibly important and I am incredibly thankful for that. How would you describe uh, your style of play that you would like to see this with this team? Yeah, for sure. I talked to them last night and um, I just told them that I want them to be able to play fast and free. And with that, it's because I know that we're going to develop them to be great basketball players, the, the basketball players that they want to be. Um, it's going to take work. It's going to take a commitment level to get to that place. But I think that when they enjoy what they do, there's a better product on the floor. So really just trying to tailor our offense around 
how to put them in the best positions to succeed. Um, and I told them defensively, I really I like to switch up. I'm an offensive person. So you have to make defense fun, right? Um, and I think that if we are constantly switching up our defense, not only does that catch the offense off guard and they really have to think, but it also makes it a little bit more fun for us to do. Uh, you called yourself a player's coach in your introduction. What does that mean to you, and what does that kind of mean for building your relationships with these players? I think there's this thing that when you get into this coach's seat, it's supposed to be me, and this is my way or the highway, um, and things of that nature. And I just I think times have changed, and, and you just don't lead that way anymore. Um, so when I talk about being a player's coach, I really want to make sure they know that they have my ear and they can talk to me and we can discuss things. And it's not just do it because I said so, but me actually explaining to them why this will make us and the team and them individually more successful. So I think just taking that time to build relationships with them and getting them to understand who I am, who my family is, I think that it just it creates that that player's coach title. Um, you were a pretty good shooter in your days and probably are still a pretty good shooter. I am still a good shooter, <laughs> just so you guys know. <laughs> and you return uh, two pretty good shooters uh, yourself um, from this year. Is the three a big part of your style, do you feel? I mean, <laughs> I want to say yes because why? Why shoot two when you can make three? But um, I'm, I also want to make sure that we do whatever we can to maximize their strengths. So if the three is is their thing, then we're going to make them some really really great three point shooters. If not, they'll be driving to the basket or their mid range game. Um, so our offense will kind of just go around what what they can do now and and where we see the potential for them. Have you? Uh Challenged Riley and Sydney to a game of horse or anything. I mean, not yet, but girls, you know, you know where my where my office is. So, you know, anytime I'll have my shoes. <laughs> that might be a great note to end on. <laughs> I believe that's the gamut of questions from the media, and I want to say thank you again to everybody for making this time to be here for this such a special moment. Thank you again. Thank you, guys. Thank you, that's it. <laughs> I got nothing else.